I'm kind of used to game consoles that have like proprietary solutions. Like you can't just plug a Nintendo Switch into any old USB-C dongle. You can't plug an Xbox controller into a PlayStation. That would be absurd. When I was making my last video on the Steam Deck, I plugged it into my Thunderbolt 4 docking station that I used for my MacBook, just to see what would happen. And it just worked. It was a little jank and took a minute to get right, but everything from the keyboard to the mouse to my audio interface, but of course, just one 4K monitor, not both, but hey, we'll take what we can get. And that's just one of the many weird and wacky things that the Steam Deck is capable of. And I shouldn't be that surprised by it. It's got a full Linux desktop, so it should be capable of basically anything that a Linux desktop is capable of. But it's still weird to see that in a game console. And yeah, it's a little jank. And I've seen other gaming devices that can do similar stuff. But honestly, they do that stuff way more jank than the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is in this weird middle area where it's a game console with a proprietary OS that's limiting in some ways, but it also kind of lets you mess around in as many other ways as it can. So the more I mess around with it, the more I'm surprised by it. This video is sponsored by Satisfy. You like things that are black, and you like things that are black. And let me tell you something, I got something right here. Do you see this? This is a cheap little Amazon knockoff. Uh, it's too tight. Oh my God. This is a cheap little knockoff grip there. We get on Amazon. It's stupid. It sucks. And I hit so much. That was a lot harder to do than I thought. You don't have to worry about a thing because now we got black grips over on the SatisfyGaming.com, Satisfy.com. It's Satisfy.com. You go to the link in the description below. It's Satisfy Wolf Den. You get Wolf Den 5. You get 5% off of anything that you want over at Satisfy.com slash Satisfy Wolf Den. Links in the description. Satisfy's got you covered. We got OLED grips, we got case bundles, we got everything that you need and they're all in the color black. You don't like the color black? Well, that's too bad because that's what they're promoting. But also we have now the Tropical Edition 1 in OLED. Sometimes your old man hands are playing the Switch for way too long and then you get a little cramp. Oh, Satisfy's got you covered. Oh, sometimes cereal spoon's not big enough, don't worry, Satisfy's got you covered. The Elite Bundle comes with a carrying case, a right angle USB-C cable, not one, but two thumbstick grips, and a holder for your Joy-Con. I bet you didn't know this about the Satisfy Grip. They're actually waterproof, mostly waterproof. And if you have a little bit of a mess, you can slosh it around and not... Buy it now, Wolf Den 5, for 5% off of your Satisfy Grip. Any of the grips that we talked about today, you can get it for 5% off. They're available now, shipping uh, all over. Use code Wolf Den 5 for 5% off at the link in the description below. Satisfy's got you covered. It's so hot here. So before, I was using the Razer Thunderbolt 4 Hub. It's what I use for my MacBook every single day. It is way overkill, especially for the Steam Deck. And it's also pretty expensive. I have a whole video on my other channel where I talk about why I use that and, and how good it is and everything. And I love that thing for my MacBook setup, but you definitely don't need that for the Steam Deck. You can just get any old USB-C dongle or hub or dock. I have right now this $25 Anchor one. It's got two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI, and a USB-C input for power delivery, so you can charge the deck while you have it docked. Unfortunately, it only does 4K 30 frames per second. Oh, the horror. The Steam Deck looks like it does 4K in SteamOS, but pretty much all games are locked at 1280 by 800. I think Portal 2 might be an exception. The Steam Deck has been getting updated pretty frequently to deal with some of the issues it's had in the past with resolution scaling in certain games, with certain external docks and external displays. Valve is also releasing their own dock that I'm sure will be better optimized for the Steam Deck. But if you have a USB-C dongle already, you don't have to spend the extra money to get the Valve one. You can just use whatever you currently have. 
You can use pretty much any external controller you want with the Steam Deck. It's got Bluetooth, so just like a PC, you can use Xbox controllers, a DualSense, even a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. If you have one of these GameCube controller adapters, you can even use a GameCube controller. It's not recognized by the OS, but it is recognized by Dolphin. This only worked if I could boot Dolphin from the desktop mode for some reason though. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And of course, third party stuff like 8 controllers and fight pads work just fine. You just might need a dongle for the USB stuff. I've had other handheld devices that are capable of external controllers in the past, and they're usually a little jank. Not every game can recognize the external controller as player one because it already has a controller on it. So that controller defaults to player one. I know that Call of Duty just completely disregards any second player controller. The Steam Deck has a feature where you can reorder the controllers, kind of like you can on a Switch. This way, if a game isn't recognizing your external controller as player one, you can just change a setting very quickly. There's a bunch of kind of hidden shortcuts you can do on the Steam Deck. Makeuseof.com has a list right here that's pretty handy. You might want to screenshot that and save it somewhere. Scratch that, you don't have to screenshot this. You can just hold down the Steam button and there it is. They pretty much took that table from here word for word. I think one of the most useful ones is probably pressing the Steam button and B will force quit a game for you in case it gets stuck, in case it freezes, in case you just can't quit it for some reason, which has happened to me a couple times. Another useful one is mouse emulation. I, I guess you would call it that. You can use either joystick or either trackpad as a mouse if you press the Steam button and the input device you want to use. You can also force an enter, tab, or escape input with the Steam key plus a corresponding D-pad direction. I will never remember this one, but it might come in handy if you need to access a game's settings to rearrange some controls. Or maybe a game requires you to press enter to start and you don't know where enter is on this thing. It's Steam plus D-pad direction. I previously talked about how you can make this an emulation machine, and I went a little overboard with it. You don't have to do all that. As I mentioned in that video, you can just download the Linux versions of the emulators and add them to Steam as a non-Steam app. So you can boot them from SteamOS no problem. And you can do that with basically any Linux game or app. What I didn't mention in that video is that RetroArch is on Steam already. So instead of doing any of that, you can just download RetroArch from Steam and play all your retro games that way. It's perfectly fine for NES all the way up to PS1. You just might want some other dedicated apps for some of the 3D stuff. Since it has a full Linux desktop on there, you can use the Steam Deck as like a work computer if you really wanted to. You can open up Word documents and, and type away. You can like watch Netflix or listen to Spotify or whatever. You can listen to Spotify while you're playing a game, but only in the Linux desktop. Unfortunately, you can't open Spotify and then switch back to the Steam OS. Doesn't work like that. Damn it. You can also live stream from the Steam Deck via OBS. And since audio interfaces are recognized, you can have a decently professional setup but it is pushing the limits of the Steam Deck. So try not to record or stream anything over 720p. Don't go too crazy. Super Mario Sunshine. And this is what it sounds like coming from the Steam Deck. It's recording the Steam Deck's screen right now. I'm using my second monitor as a little window for OBS. And then that's just it. If you really wanted to, you could straight up attach a whole ass GPU to the Steam Deck to quadruple your performance. You're a little bit bottlenecked by the CPU, but you could get a whole 4K 60 frames per second out of a bunch of games, which is absolutely insane. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just plugging in an external GPU enclosure. You need to take the back off and plug in a ridiculous looking M.2 to PCIe adapter. I'm not gonna go through all that, but ETA Prime has a great video where he already did all the dirty work. And it's very interesting. In order to do that, you would need to run Windows on the Steam Deck, which obviously opens up a whole slew of new possibilities for you. Unfortunately, Windows doesn't work that great on the Steam Deck right now. Some of the drivers don't work as they should, so it's a little jank. 
I plan on doing this to my Steam Deck eventually. I would love to be able to just put Windows on a micro SD card and be able to pop it in and pop it out whenever I want to run Windows. People say that micro SD cards aren't fast enough for stuff like that, but they're plenty fast enough for the things that we want to do on Windows. They can run the games just fine. Plus, the convenience of having that micro SD card outweighs any of the minute performance issues you might have. But I'm still waiting for some officially supported drivers. Wait. They're here? Oh, no, you can't dual boot. Garbage, trash, don't want it. Get out of here. Valve is actively working on getting those drivers to be supported, and Windows seems very open to Steam Deck support. They already have Game Pass working on there, kind of, sort of, but they have an official guide to get it to work, so they seem pretty dedicated. Speaking of micro SD cards, you can pop in and out micro SD cards on the fly. Yeah, micro SD cards aren't going to be as fast as the internal storage, but they're going to be plenty fast enough for any of the games that you are going to want to play. You might be surprised. I got the 256 gigabyte version of the Steam Deck, and I was a little surprised at how little that ended up being. Apex Legends takes up about half of that space. When I put Windows on this thing, I'm going to want to put Warzone on it. That's 200 gigabytes right there. Well, if you want to keep stuff downloaded instead of having to re-download a game every time you want to play it because the file sizes are so big, you can just have dedicated micro SD cards for certain games or whole libraries of games. So you can potentially make your own game cartridges for the Steam Deck using micro SD cards. Of course, you could also just upgrade the internal storage if you wanted to pretty easily. In fact, almost everything on the Steam Deck is user upgradable and repairable. iFixit just released a list of all of the stuff that they're gonna have available for the Steam Deck. So if you wanted to say upgrade the regular screen to the premium anti-glare screen that's only available on the 512 gigabyte model, you can do that for just a hundred bucks and about one to two hours of your time just banging your head against the wall because screen repairs are the hardest thing to do on these things. It's probably easier on here than it is on say like an iPhone, but I still don't want to do that. They also purposely made the thumbsticks easy to swap out because drift is inevitable if you plan on using this a lot. iFixit is also selling the housing in case you drop it and crack it. Hell, even the motherboard is on sale. You can almost build your own Steam Deck if you really wanted to. It's probably gonna be pretty expensive to do it that way and also, they don't have certain essential ribbon cables and like buttons and stuff. So you can't really build your own, but you can get pretty damn close. And I'm sure that there's plenty of other wacky things you can do with the Steam Deck that I'm just not thinking about right now. I've given this thing a lot of flack in the past for just how janky it can be sometimes, but that jank is what allows us to be able to do all of these weird wacky things with it. It's what opens it up to all of these different possibilities. It's a surprisingly versatile machine, and people are finding new use cases and new functionality every day. They're also updating it to add new functionality every day. So if you know anything that you can do with this that I left out that I might be interested in, you can leave it in the comments below. You can at me on Twitter or any and all of this other social media garbage. Or you can go over to twitch.tv slash wolfden. I'm there frequently at night. That's like the best way to reach me. You can just say it in the chat and, and we can talk about it live right there. Thank you, Satisfy, for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description below. And of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here. Turn on notifications if you want to know when every single video goes live. YouTube's only going to tell you about the niche stuff that it thinks you're interested in. And you can share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe has a Steam Deck or is waiting for one and wants to know all the cool new things they can do with it. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week.